Hi guys, today we're going to be doing a lot. Okay, and it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to be going over the CMW workbook, and that's going to be Deco Yellow PC 1011. But we're, the first couple of colors, we weren't really concentrating too much on the polychromos because we had to work our way into the polychromos colors. Today is very heavily done in polychromos, and I'm going to be working in polychromos and giving you the comps for Prismacolor, so it kind of changes. In addition to that, we're going to go through the Prismacolor at the beginning, and then when we come to the demo, this demo is going to be great because I'm going to be working with a Sherry Baldy picture. I'm new to Sherry Baldy and completely loving her pictures. I picked out a nice Easter picture. And we're going to be not only working with the Deco Yellow and the cream from the Polychromos, but I'm going to teach you a couple things like how to do teddy bear fur. And we're going to be also learning how to do blonde hair. All in the same video, so keep on watching. Hi guys, welcome back. Okay, today we have another color in our CMW workbook. And today we're going to be working with Deco Yellow. So if you are working out of the PDF, you're going to be printing out page 18, 19, and 20. If you're working with the master sheets, you're going to get out one of your master sheets. Do not color on your master sheet. Make a copy of it. And at the top, you're going to put in PC 1011 slash deco yellow, and then color in this square with the deco yellow. For those of you who are doing this and using the polychromos, Deco Yellow is very close to the cream color, and today's demo is going to be a polychromos demo for the most part. I just felt that it would be fair for those who are using the uh, polychromos to get their own demonstration. The colors are very similar, but you're going to see in today's lesson that they are different and they can be used differently. So here's the cream, an example of the cream from the Polychromos. Now this is the cream from Prismacolor. And then here you have the star of the show, Deco Yellow. And as you could see, when you put them all together, there's not a huge difference. Deco Yellow is perhaps slightly brighter yellow but as you're going to see on today's demo working with all three or just two of them or one of them is going to give you the same result so those are your comps and that's polychromos cream and it's number 9201 slash 102 so to begin with, Deco Yellow is going to be the first color in the Prisma set where yellow is really going to affect the color. It's going to create a richer orange. It, it's going to um, create the green. The colors before, such as the cream and uh, the ginger root and eggshell, they had a lot of beige in them. And they were also weaker colors, so a lot of times that when you use those colors, they're not going to affect, they're going to take second to um, a more dominant color. Deco Yellow now sneaks in there and says no, and it's really going to start to change the color. So you have to be a little bit more careful when you start getting into those yellows, because when you get them near gray, they're really going to create a mess. So let's take a look at the sheets and you'll be able to see a little bit more clearly. The first three rows are all green light rows. They blend really nicely because you're looking at really the the yellows and the oranges. Since yellow creates orange, you're not going to have any sort of problem adding in a deco yellow with any orange color that's in the group. 
They also start to blend really nicely with the reds. Remember, you're going to start to get a little bit more of your orange color as you progress. Some of my favorite ones, Scarlet Lake, that really produced a nice orangey in-between color, a nice fire blend. I also want you to take particular look at what the cream looks like with the deco yellow and I know there's a very slight color difference but what we're going to be working on today it's going to make a difference and I did use a lot of cream mixed with the deco yellow. As you go into the pinks you're really in the green zone. Um, getting towards the nectars, the blush pinks, this was one of my favorite blends, blush pink because it's a muted pink and deco yellow is a whited out yellow. So this was one of my favorite blends. As you get into the pink rose, the deco pink, deco peach, and so on, up until light peach. Then you start getting into the beigey and yellow and beige, well, that's like sort of like a matter of, of taste. It's not my favorite thing in the world to blend. It, it's not that it becomes muddy, it, and it sort of does. Uh, it's just not attractive. And it, it's not something that I purposefully put together. So you're going to go through your peach beige and your seashell pink as, meh, not great. And then all of a sudden the salmon, which has a little bit more orange, this was one of my favorite blends, the salmon pink with the deco yellow, because it, they're sort of at the same muted out level, and they don't dominate each other. And so this blend really is a very smooth blend. It looks good on flowers. It looks good actually on a lot of things, on uh, clothing that I've done, so... This is definitely one of my favorites. And then you start getting into your pinks. As you get towards your rosy and your clay, it's it's not that attractive. You're starting to get a little bit of the gray into there and it starts to look muddy. And and, and just look at this. It's not that great as a palette. It's You could blend it, but I don't have any use for it. And then we go back into our browns. Yellow does look good with brown. And I put a no in the black cher uh, black raspberry, black cherry, and grayed lavender. Black raspberry I probably would be okay with, and black cherry, because it has the reds. It wouldn't kill your picture. Uh, once you get into the grayed lavender, this, listen to its name, it's got gray in it. You're going to create mud. Your lavender, it's just doesn't blend well, but looks okay with a palette. And then you start getting uh, Dahlia Purple. Uh, looks good with it because Dahlia Purple looks good with most things. It's just one of those colors. And then Parma Violet. I put a little red dot here, even though it's okay. I mean, maybe for Easter it's okay, but it's not my favorite blend in the world. In fact, when you blend it out... And you actually look right there at this color. It's not that great. It probably would be okay for um, a palette. As we move along, we have the black grape again. It doesn't blend very good. Um, it's okay as a palette, but these are not the greatest as far as mixing these two colors go. And then you get into your blues. Your blues are... Or okay, you're starting to mix in and create the color green, and it's okay. Some of my uh, favorite ones, the sky blue light, was okay. It looked really good as a palette, not so much blended. But the rest of them, um, powder blue was the same thing. You're starting to get into the gray. It looks really good as a palette, but not so much as a blend. And you the same thing with the cloud blue. These three, the sky blue, the cloud blue, and the powder blue, are really along the same lines. 
I don't know why they didn't just put them next to each other. And it, it's basically the same. Moving along, uh, Light Aqua was one of my favorite ones that blended out into a very light green and it was very pretty. Aquamarine starts to get a little stronger. Gray green light, uh-uh, same thing. You're adding in the gray and the yellow, no good. Pale sage was okay. You're starting, the green in the sage is starting to dominate and it looked good. Um, yellow chartreuse was fine. All your, uh, your regular chartreuse, lime peel, green okra, mm-mm. Look how muddy that got. There's just other things that start to dominate it. And then your spring green, your apple greens going through your, up into your kelp was okay. Sandbar, no. It, look, at the, look at the mud it creates right here. Not good. Sepia, the same thing. Got to be careful. I mean, I have used sepia in very small amounts with the yellow. Um, as you're going to see, uh, I didn't use sepia. I used uh, a different color, but it was along the same lines as the sepia. If you're new with this and you don't know how to apply it, the color, so that it's okay in little bits, uh, stay away from this. Um and then you go back into your greens, uh, your jade green, your muted turquoise, and your peacock green. That will fine. Now we have our no-no page. Anytime you start mixing yellow into, well, putty beige, as I say every week, nothing looks good with putty beige. Um, your light umber, your chocolate, it's not an attractive blend. There's better choices that I would make a brighter yellow with those. But then you have a couple that are good because they have the reds, the, the burnt okra, this uh, sienna, terracotta, henna. They're okay because they've got the reds in them and the reds create the fire color. Tuscan, espresso. I used espresso and yellow in the picture and you'll see where and in very, very little bits and we're going to go along the line here you're going to have it's a palette choice you're going into your grays I really recommend new people stay away from the color blend yellow and uh yellow and gray if you don't mix them well and in the right places it really muddies the picture and we go through the same your light grays are okay as a palette. Your darker grays, not so much. White blends with everything. Your, okay, your silver and metallic colors, I left it blank on purpose because when you're creating some of the metallics, you might want to use deco yellow if you're using the metallics as part. If you're going to blend like silver and yellow, you are going to, it's not an attractive mix. You lose the metallic from the pencil whenever you blend these metallics. And the same thing goes for your neons. You're going to lose the, um, you're going to lose the brightness from the color, but they look okay as a palette. Like you could put them together as a palette, but not as a blend. And that takes us to the end. Now, my demo today um, is going to make a difference where you see this pencil in action and how I used it. So let's get on to the demo. And so we've come to the demo part of this video. And I'm working from the Sherry Baldy, a collection of pictures, their downloads. I think I've become addicted to that page because there are so many cute things. So in this demonstration, I'm going to go over some texture with you guys, the ears and the hair. Now with the ears, I've done far realistic animal fur. 
Here, I didn't want to do realistic animal fur because it's a cutesy picture and I would hate for her to be wearing real rabbit ears. So I, I did it in teddy bear fur, which of course is great for many, many pictures. So I began this picture, I'm using the polychrome pencils and I'm doing a regular blend with them. And we've talked about polychromes in the past. These are oil pencils and oil pencils lay down differently. They're not like Prismacolor. I really, really like using polychromes because when you put down uh, color on the page, polychromes usually stay where they belong. So if you put down a line somewhere and you want that line to stay, this is definitely the set for you. But on the flip side, it doesn't blend out as easily. They do blend out. Think about, I've said this in the past, with Prismacolor, it's like baking a cake. You put all the ingredients in a bowl and you blend it up and you get a cake. Polychromes are more like cellophane. When you put a yellow piece of cellophane down and a blue piece of cellophane down, when you look through it, you're gonna see green. If you remove the blue, piece of cellophane, it's going to be just yellow. So it's kind of the same. It's done by layering. So this is something you're going to have to get used to if you're using polychromes. Now, the best of all worlds is what I'm doing here. I'm using my polychromes and I'm adding Prismacolor to it. And pretty much all artists that are really into doing commissioned pieces, they'll use a combination of, of the oil and the Prismacolor. If I was going to sell a picture, I would absolutely use a combination of the two because you get two different effects. So we're, I'm just finishing up with the ribbons here and I'm adding some Posca. I had somebody, I had, actually I had two people ask me this week what Posca was. And Posca is an acrylic paint pen that many coloring artists do use on their pictures because white really doesn't come out white, white. And when you use the Posca, you will get those crisp white dots and it's easy. You have to let it dry and not just till it's dry to the touch. It takes like a day to put it and where it won't come off. So if you do mess up with the Posca, you can scratch it off once it's dry. You can color over it. It's not, I mean, I've had Posca pens leak onto my pictures and you would never know it. So you don't go into a panic when you're using that. I also use a brand called Acrylico. Um, their link is in the description box. That is a staple on my desk, my Acrylicos and my pasta. My I don't like the white in the Acrylico set. It, I think there's 16 colored um, acrylic pens in the set. I don't really like the white. It's not as good as the Posca, and that's why I use both. And on the flip side, I don't really like the Posca pens in the other colors as much as I like the Acrylicos. So that's my tip for that. <laughs> okay, when I was doing the inside of the ears, I love this pencil combination. You use the pinks. Now you can use the pinks on from the Prismacolor or you can use the pinks from the um, Polychromos. My pencils, that I, the exact pencils that I'm using are up on the video and you can follow it that way without just listening to my voice. When you use the pinks and then you blend in the deco yellow in the center, you could see it becomes almost like a fun highlight. It's very Easter-like. It's one of my favorite combinations to even use on backgrounds. It mixes very easily. Now, I, I said earlier, the polychromes, the equivalent to deco yellow um, would be the cream. The those two match up the best. 
So right now in your arsenal, you've been working in the CMW book. In your arsenal now, you will be comfortable working with cream, deco yellow, and eggshell from Prismacolor. Add in a little bit of um, artichoke, which does blend very well with these pencils, and you've got a winning combination. Another combination pencil that I do add in there all the time is Goldenrod. Goldenrod is um, henna. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Goldenrod is terracotta in the polychromos. Those are your equivalents. If you're going to look for um, terracotta in the Prismacolor, it's a lot darker and it's a lot more deeper orange red. So those colors don't go by the names. And you could see I'm doing the feet now and it blends in really good. On this picture, I interchanged my pencils. Sometimes I picked up the uh, cream in the polychrome, and sometimes I just picked up the deco yellow from the Prismacolor, and there was no difference. You, you couldn't tell in the final picture really when I used what. So it was basically what I grabbed off my desk uh, when it came to choosing those, you know, which pencil I was going to use. And as you could see, my desk is full of pencils. I try to, I really, I try to work neatly and it just doesn't work for me. My If I don't have my pencils all over the place, I'm not happy. Okay, now the center of the feet, I'm adding in cream from the Prismacolor, which is the first color in the set. The lightest color that they give you is the cream. And... That is a very, very pale yellow, and you could see if you blend it with white, you get like a really nice off-white that blends perfectly with the cream from Polychromos and the Deco Yellow. Now, this is going to, when we start doing the hair, this is going to be very important. And here I'm just working on the face. When I work on faces, I work from the outside in all the time. And I try to build the color from where the highlight is going to be where I want it to be. And in this case, it was directly in the front of the face is where I wanted my highlight to be. And I'm adding in a little blush in there. Uh, working with the Prisma colors, there's more of a choice when it comes to uh, face. So I always do when I'm working with polychromes, I always do mix in both. And that's the clay rose that I'm adding in on the edges. Now I realize I haven't used too much of the, the cream color yet or the deco yellow yet. Okay, now in the shirt, I did add it as my secondary color. And it is working very nicely with the greens. You'll never have a problem. Uh, just about none of the greens uh, create mud when mixed with yellow. That's because green is created using yellow. So you're not going to get a mud color. And a lot of people ask me, what is mud? Mud is that color that is nondescript. It's usually a brownish gray black color that comes from mixing too many colors or a pencil that is reacting to a color in a negative way. And that has to do with the um, color wheel. If you are mixing complementary colors, they don't often work out very well. And so when you're doing the CMW, it's going to specifically show you what those colors are and how they react 
What becomes even more confusing to people is they'll put down two colors that they think are going to work out well. By a red and a blue, you should get purple, but that red may have too much orange in it. And it's going to react differently than the way you think it's going to react. And that's why doing your CMW and getting those pencil blends and the understanding of what each color uses to create that color is so important. And that's actually the key to working this system and to creating pictures that don't accidentally create that mud color. Occasionally, on pictures, I intend to have the mud color, especially when it comes to ground cover. A little bit of that mud color in there becomes the color because it's ground. It's dirt, and that's so you don't want dirt in the hair, but you do want dirt on the ground. So it does work out occasionally and in places and sometimes in darkened areas. Now, on this picture, I had to be very careful. I couldn't add gray shadows. In fact, I didn't do too much shadowing on this picture. Uh, what I did was blending. Okay, we're starting the hair now, and I really wanted to go over this. Sometimes it's tricky to get blonde, blonde hair because people don't know how to add in other colors that it won't change the color of the hair. It'll just create the highlights and the lowlights. I started out using the Deco Yellow, which is a pretty bright yellow. I used to start out using, um, I used to start out using Canary Yellow. And I found that at the end of using the Canary Yellow, I often got a brassy look on hair. So that got me looking into other combinations that were better. And I found that when doing blonde, blonde hair, where I don't want to create a dirty blonde hair or a light brown hair at the very end, I'm going to use the deco yellow. I may pick up the, I may use a touch or two of canary yellow with it to create a like a really bright area for blonde hair this is your go-to pencil when you when you're looking for that little girl blonde hair and the color i mixed into this was goldenrod well technically it would be um terracotta because I picked up my polychromos pencils, but for those who are working with the Prismacolor, that's my that that's the equivalent to the Goldenrod. And Goldenrod is a really great color for doing low lights with blonde hair. It won't change the blonde, but it'll just show you that the light is being altered on it. Another thing with blonde blonde hair. I don't add in gray highlights. I don't add in gray shadows on blonde hair because it's difficult. You can. Technically, if you have a light enough touch, you can add the shadow color on top of the yellow. That's a technique that you kind of have to practice and play with. Because you don't really want that dark color to be blending with the yellow. Because that is a definite mud color. By working with the polychromos, it's a little bit easier. Because the yellow is not going to mix well with the, um, the physical creaminess of it. Like the cake batter effect is not going to be created with polychromos. So it's easier to put a gray shadow on polychromos than it is to put a gray shadow on with Prismacolor. Now I'm just darkening in the feet a little bit because I'm going to make that uh, duck in between, the little duckling in between also yellow. I needed it to be darker so that the lightness in the 
duckling stood out and it didn't the page didn't just look ultra yellow deco yellow is also a fantastic undertone color now i don't use it for an undertone yellow on skin because it's a little bit too bright for skin undertone but for most hair undertone all the colors the yellow will be great for that first pencil undertone And with the duckling, even though I'm undertoning with the same color as the hair, I'm going to give it a little bit more of an orange and red overtone on top of this. Oh, there was, there was another thing that I wanted to talk to you while we're just waiting to get to the texture part of this where I'm going to do the ears in a texture. People wrote to me this week that they're having trouble uh, mixing more than three colors. And I, I briefly mentioned it in another video, but I wanted to talk again about it while I was teaching you about blending. At the beginning level, you really shouldn't be striving for more than three colors. Three colors are perfect for most pictures. In fact, for me, I can do a picture in three colors and like three colors in area, not three colors on the page. Um, you're going to look for three different things. You want a light, a medium, and a dark. Okay, we're starting with the ears. And even though I'm starting with the uh, terracotta and the outside of the ears, I'm going to give the ears a yellow undertone with the deco yellow. Because that's going to be the area that is going to see through the fur. Like the undercoat, if you look at a dog like a German Shepherd, you have that light undertone. If you, if you brush the hair like away from you instead of with the way the hair grows, and you'll see it. If you start with a yellow undertone, even though I'm doing the outside, I'm kind of just testing the waters here. Um, but... Like if I was going to do these ears over again, I would just go straight for the undertone of the yellow. Here I'm using the color uh, black raspberry. I don't use that color enough and I don't know why. I think in the future I'm going to be picking this pencil up because it really gives a nice rich reddish brown tone to anything. And... Because it's brown, the only colors that it doesn't really mix well with is the gray. And even with the gray, it can you, you can do shadowing with it. Um, most of the time, I prefer black with brown, not gray with brown. And notice that I'm doing large, quick strokes. And the stroke that I'm using is the tapered stroke. If you don't know how to do a tapered stroke, I will leave the... Link in the description on the video I did to teach you how to do the tapered stroke. Because I'm doing like fake fur and I don't really want it to look like real animal fur. Like I want it to be cutesy. I'm using duller points. If I really wanted it to be realistic, my points would be very sharp. And I'd be color. I would be sharpening my pencil quite a lot. I'm working from the outside in, in layers, and I'm not doing any sort of blending. I'm relying on just the lines to fill in the space, and I know it takes a long time. But I want to get the different colors next to each other, not blended with each other. And that's what's going to give you the texture for a teddy bear. Now, if you make the make it a little bit curlier, now I did this in straight hair, but if you curve it, you can really get a nice little curly stuffed animal look. Now you could see I'm all over the place with my pencils. I am not a person that likes to finish one area without seeing what color looks like next to it. 
Um, it kind of, to me, it pigeonholes me into a certain tone. And I don't like that. I do that at the end. Uh, my denim colors for... Okay, I'm using denim blue out of the Prismacolor set to do her overalls. I'm mixing it with light cobalt turquoise and black. And, and I believe some white in there too, of course. If you're going to only have your Prismacolors, you can use electric blue with denim blue and white and black. Or you can use your non-photo blue. They both, both pencils work. And I'm finishing up the duck now. And now I'm starting, now that the picture is filled with color, I'm starting to adjust where I want my darks and my lights to be. As far as eyelashes go, I used to use a very, very fine marker to do eyelashes, but because you really can't do eyelashes in Prismacolor that come out really, really um, distinct because it's a soft blending pencil. Um, if you have the Polychromo set, your black pencil can be substituted for ink. It works out just as good. I used to use Vera Thins too when I was doing the eyes, but and Vera Thins are from the Prismacolor company, and I just found them a little bit too light. They didn't give me a rich enough black when I wanted it, so I sort of stopped using my Vera Thins. I mean, they're good pencils if you have them and you don't have a polychrome. They're your next choice. They're good, but now that I have better pencils or different pencils that work better. That's kind of why I haven't really broken out my Verithins for, for anything. On the hair now, you see I'm going with the three colors. Now, I'm using cream from Prismacolor. I'm using terracotta. I'm using Goldenrod, and the ter Terracotta would be from the Polychromo set. Don't believe I put in eggshell, but you can use eggshell. So my staple blonde blonde hair that I'll be using are just the three colors that we have gone over so far from the CMW blending system. It's those beginning yellows. Canary yellow would probably be on adult hair that may have been, you know, bleached or highlighted artificially. I'm doing some shadowing in here now, and the pencil that I chose was espresso. And I'm using espresso because if I used a gray, it would really muddy up her hair. And I want her hair to look pretty and bright and healthy. I'm going to start to finish this up and snap a pic for the end. If you're interested in participating in the CMW blending course, the link is in the description where you can get the paperwork. I'm starting to collect some really funny stories about people who are taking this course. Um, things I could have never imagined. <laughs> so I will see you guys tomorrow. We're going to continue with the real life videos. I think I have three more to show you guys and that's all finished and I will see you guys tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.